All right, guys, how's it going? I wanted to go ahead and do a quick video to get this stamp sort of build out. Um, had a few people asking about it, so I thought I'd go ahead and put together a build video. I personally have loved this build and have not found another set combination to overtake this build. This has been one of the hardest hitting stamp sort builds that I've put together as far as, far as the builds that I've played. I've tried a bunch of different stuff and nothing can match this build's offensive capabilities here. Um, let's go ahead and get into it and not make this too long. This is a D-Swing Stamp Sword build, 2H and Bow. Uh, here's the back bar stats here. Stamp recovery is pretty decent. Um, max stat stamp is pretty decent as well. Um, as far as our resistances, those are looking pretty nice here. About 15,000. Um, critical resist, I usually, one piece is well fitted. It's supposed to be in pin. Um, the base penetration value is very, very nice. Goes along well with another one of our sets here. Let's go ahead and get into the sets that we're running. The main thing that I did recently add to this build is the master bow um, to increase the damage here. Um, this isn't the Rathstone patch here, so the enchants from dual wield have been halved. I was running the master's dual wield. I didn't really like it as much because the enchants were gone. And the main reason why I ran an enchant on the back bar was to proc the weapon damage enchant, that being halved. It's only around 222, which doesn't, even, even at an infuse, is very, very low. Enchants are very, very low. You're better off running a poison if you do like the dual wheel back bar. Um, me personally, I've always liked Stam Sork with the 2H front bar, but I've never liked the low dot damage of dual wheel on a Stam Sork. There's no class ability to fill in for your burst like on Stam Den or any other um, stamina classes that can kind of make it add up a little bit better. Uh, how we're getting our resistances to the 15,000 mark here is we are running one protective here. And if you haven't already seen it, we're running Seventh Legion and Night Mother. These two sets work very, very well together, but the one thing they lack is they lack a stamina bonus in the um, set bonuses here. Both these sets here are just mainly just stats. That's what really puts our weapon crit so high. This is without a major savagery pot here. I take a weapon crit pot, we go up to 49%. Our healing is going to be increased. Our damage is going to be increased. Everything is going to be skyrocketed up. That's not even counting if we have a night blade near us, giving us the minor savagery buff. We'll be looking at sitting close to 59% um, crit, well, 58% crit chance. Um, I do swap out blood spawn with troll king. I can just show you the values with troll king. That'll make the crit resist look a bit better. And having it gold brings up to that 15k value here but our weapon critical is is very very nice even on the front bar is 47 47.9 so basically 48 um the main reason for a high crit here is because we are using one of the stamp source tools that we the one few few tool that we do have is going to be crit search crit search poison jack that's a dot that's going to be running hurricane's going to be running we're going to get a bunch of heals off of it also, the mindset behind this build here, Night Mother's Gaze is active on the front bar here when we're attacking. Start off on the back bar, light attack, poison inject, proc our weapon enchant, proc our master bow set piece, come on the front bar, finish that target that we already marked. Um, this works well with using Hurricane here to major fracture the entire group here using Night Mother's Gaze. Also, too, we're stacking weapon damage with two infused weapon damage. Um, well, one infused weapon damage. Sorry about that. I was going to change this to infuse here, but I kind of do like the max stam being around 34. And that's another issue that we came into with running these two sets together without a stam bonus. In the Wrathstone patch here, the way that CP is um, implemented in the equation for the 20% of the resource increase, I have found the tower to multiply the best. It multiplies very, very well. Without the tower, I'm sitting around like 31 on my front bar here, and I'm well below 30 on my back bar 
without having down armaments on. Um, this just gives us a little bit more room to breathe and have a little bit more max stat. Also to unbuff, you can see the tool tip from the D swing here is looking pretty good. Resolving Vigor is looking pretty good and the Dawn Breaker is looking pretty good as far as the tool tips goes. Buffing up without our back bar bow, looking at 17,000 and 17,000 on the Dawn Breaker with a 15K Resolving Vigor without any other buffs. Now, in PvP, you'll be missing Continuous Attack. Um, you'll be missing what continuous attack and our back bar weapon damage enchant. The damage is there. All also too, you're missing seven legion. The damage is more than there. That's also due to the orc passives here. We have swift warrior increasing our weapon damage by 258 and keeping us mobile with a good sprint speed and reduced cost. Max health by a thousand. Uh, it works. When you do damage with the weapon ability, you heal for 660. I don't believe that can proc Troll King. I think they tried to stop proc heals, causing other heals. Um, this combines very well with Seventh Legion, as far as the heal from the set bonus on Seventh Legion. And Bronny increased max stamina by 2000. This just sits Orc at a really, really good place of being very mobile, being very aggressive and having a lot of weapon damage and stem sork you benefit from all of those and the sets complement that as well this one from nightmare's gaze you get the major fracture which is going to bring your penetration value up to around 9,000 mark seven legion take any kind of damage everybody has a dot on you nowadays the dot damage can actually proc this here and the weapon damage skyrockets pretty pretty high um, as far as our armor buffs here sitting at 15,000 if we are just in Troll King here, we're at 20,000. If we are in Blood Spawn, that would be around 26 with Blood Spawn Proct. Um, this build works for me all around. I can run this build in a in a casual duel, not like a hardcore du dueling tournament. Um, with And when I am dueling, what I do, the only thing I change is I throw on, well, I throw on a One Piece um, Lord Warden and a One Piece Mighty Two down just to bring up my resistances to a base value of 20,000. And when it is with the armor buff is at 20, it's at 25,000. Um, and other than that, the rest of the sets just work very, very well together. Um, as far as the seventh legion and the night mother's gaze on this bill here, having seventh legion active at all times here, make sure that you're going to get that proc a lot more. Also two of you on your back bar with poison jack, you can also cause the poison jack to hit much harder as well. Um, like I said before, I have one Robust, one Infuse, one Protective here, one Stand Recovery, the rest Weapon Damage. You could make this other one Weapon Damage is Infuse as well, in order to boost up your Weapon Damage a lot higher. I personally don't think the build needs it, I think it's fine where it is. Just doing our Weapon Damage buff, we're right at 3.8k Weapon Damage, so we're actually looking pretty good. As far as the glyphs on the armor here for the main setup here, I ran an extra triglyph here just to get the Max Magica. We are using Streak and Dark Deal. We'll go over there a little bit later in order to make sure we have enough Max Magica to use those skills and abilities. Um, the rest are Stam Enchant, aside from the big pieces having triglyphs on them. The triglyphs on the big pieces is very important. You don't necessarily have to use another tri tri triglyph here. Sorry, I can't talk. But um, that really helps keep your max magic pool really nice. Um, on the front bar here, the enchant I went with here was the um, absorb stamina enchant. This is very interesting because as you're attacking, this has a higher chance to proc than the um, almost than the red guard passive here for for adrenaline rush. This will also in ensure that you do have some kind of regen go along with your dark deal and for your light attacks that you're hitting. So I actually like this quite a lot. Um, as far as running, I thought I was going to run the weapon damage enchant on the front bar here just to keep that up more, but having it be infused on the back bar, I'm getting more weapon damage and this making the master bow set that more valuable. 
looking over the skills, we're running D-Swing, Executioner, or Reverse Slice, it, it depends on your flavor. Since I'm running Poison Injection and using the, the um, Master Bow here, I wanted to go a little bit more single target and making sure that you can actually put down that target that you're going after. Um, there's a lot of healing here in this patch here and, and the previous patches. So you have to make sure you can really dish out a lot of damage against that target. We have Vigor in the front bar here. This is just to increase our heals. Um, as far as Vigor and the placement, I like it on the front bar, and necessarily on the back bar. It's a little bit lower, as you can see here. That's if it was on the back bar. And this is Vigor on the front bar. And we have Rally, this is our burst heal. I like Rally more than four momentum. Four momentum, you can cast it and still be snared, and the cost of stamina for it doesn't really make it too valuable. Down armaments, we're kind of locked into having this on the front bar here um, because our other ultimate on the back bar, in order to get the Daedric summoning passive here for Daedric protection, increase health and stamina recovery by 20%. This helps with your stamina recovery and it helps with Troll King if you want to wear that or if you just want a static health recovery due to the fact that we are using our Tayum Takeaway Broth, which does give you some health recovery. To just have that very good base static health recovery, you're gonna need to have that active. Also too, Seventh Legion has a three piece set bonus of health recovery as well. So that goes into the whole flavor of Orc. I will tell you that last patch here, I had unbuffed, it was at 1.2 and it was at, um, that 20% from the health recovery from the orc passive here, that did make a big difference, but it only lowered it by 200. So it's not missed that much. We have unflinching rage in its place. Um, I guess it's a substitute for it. It was every, every four seconds. I don't really see too much from this because all healing and PVP is, is halved, so. I don't know, I'll probably do some more testing on it and see if I notice anything later. Um, let's see here, so we want to that. We're going to our skills. DB on the front bar, this is going to increase our weapon damage a little bit. And also too, it's the signature stamina ultimate to use. It actually does really good damage here. I will swap that out here for Berserker Rage on the front bar here. Berserker Rage on the front bar is very good for punishing very tanky targets. It ignores resist. A lot of people don't really use this move. It ignores resist. And when you initiate the ultimate here, um, you get an immunity to snares and disabling effects for the full eight seconds of duration. And it gives you the amount of targeted resist ignored. I've been able to get my Physical and spell resistance up to 62,000, which I know over anything over cap doesn't really matter. But just to say, if you're in a situation here where you're fighting outnumbered, um, this definitely does come in handy as far as getting away and staying even tankier on this setup here. Um, on the back bar here, we have Hurricane. Poison Injection to proc the Master Bow set piece. We have Ball of Lightning, not Streak. We're using Ball of Lightning defensively when we're getting away. If anything that really seems powerful this patch and last patch is Magicka users. Those light attacks from the staffs, the execute from Sorks here, um, all most Magicka based attacks will hit pretty hard, especially when you're trying to get away and most likely at low health. Ball of Lightning here can be used defensively. I've used Ball of Lightning to block a Mag Knight Blades um, Bow Proc and a Crystal Frag. It really does do pretty good. The only thing is that it only absorbs spells. Um, most people think that it absorbs all projectiles, it's only spells. So, and you have to really make sure you kind of line of sight the um, Lightning Ball once it does appear. We are using Dark Deal and we're using crit surge crit surge I, I hear a lot of people don't like crit surge i personally love crit surge works a whole bunch crit surge will be on par on my on my um combat metrics recap from resolving vigor even with rally it'll do way more healing but our crit chance is very very high 
due to the fact that we are in medium armor here. Um, let's see here. The food already stated here was Arteum. I use a combination of weapon crit pots and immovable pots right here. I have some detect pots as well for the night blades. And let's see, what else are we missing? Oh, the CP. So the CP, um, I've been messing around with CP a lot. It's some static points here that you have to spend. 32 in the bless, increase your healing. Three into physical weapon expert, only because we want to get this passive here. Increase your damage done with light attacks by 5%, plus the bound armor emits 11%. It's by 16% when they're low health that when you light attack weaving in your executioner, you can make sure that you really put those targets down. Um, precise strikes, I would want to run more into here, but we need more piercing. I'd rather have the consistent upfront damage of penetration than to have just the extra 2% as far as the critical damage. 64 in the mighty. Um, we're multiplying bigger numbers here. The executioner and Diesling want to have a better multiplier on those numbers here. Zero in the Thaumaturge, I've never really seen too much of a benefit here. Um, the dot numbers are usually much smaller. I'd rather increase the bigger numbers here. Our poison jet does just fine without it. And if so, it will only be like 10% more, which is of a thousand is not that much. More so than our D swing, which it has a around a 17,000 tool tip on average. And uh, goes up even higher than that. I'd rather be able to multiply that a little bit better. Ironclad, 66, resistance, 47. Thick stand, 51, dots will kill you. 37 hardy, 37 elemental defender. That's to get the passive here. We don't have the passive here for reinforce. That doesn't really do anything. 32 in a quick recovery. This is a great stat to build into. Um, it makes your healing receive, which does not show up on the tool tip. Very, very nice. One in the siphoner, just to have an extra thing to purge for Magplars. 56 in the Warlord. 19 in the Sprinter. I took some out of these, out of this star here. Due to the fact that we are an Orc here and we need to spend those in other places. 56 in the Mooncap. The 13% doesn't really make too much of a difference. 32 in the Tenacity. Um, we are heavy attacking. We are light attacking. And the increase from the heavy attacks is actually very, very good. The healthy passive here is for getting our health recovery up, which is going to overall make us way more tanky. The main point that you need to take away from this star here is the wind running. A lot of people overlook this here. Increases your health recovery and magical recovery. Those are two things that we're going to need. We're going to need to heal up. We're going to need to dark deal. We're going to need to streak. This is going to help us with both of those while sprinting. 56 in the tumbling. 23 in the Shadow War. This is something I just recently started doing here. Um, and I'll go over that now since we have already made our way around the Champion Tree Star. So, one of the passes here that I was never really using that got changed, I think two patches ago, was the Persistent. When you block any, when you block an attack, your next magic or stamina ability costs 15% less. We're already in medium armor. Things are already cheap. All you have to do is block any attack, anything that comes your way. You can block a light attack. You can block a light attack from a bow. Your next magicka or stamina ability will be 15% less. You can do a cheap dark deal. You can do a cheap streak. You can cast a cheap crit surge. These are our most training skills right here. So that works really well. Also too, with this new patch um, for Wrathstone, a lot of people kind of overlook this because they said for the Magicka version for Bound Armors, but Hurricane got a reduction in cost. Hurricane will be cheaper too. So you uh, Hurricane only costs uh, 1,900 now from its 2,900 that it used to cost. Also to another change is Amplitude. I really like this here. Um, due to the fact that I play mostly 2H and Bow, I wasn't really taking advantage of implosion too much. It would go off every now and then, very randomly and unexpected, um, not really closing any kills or anything that I was hoping it would kick in on. This is really, really good. 
Um, most of the time, you're going to be hitting it around the 90% of the of, of the target's health. So you're going to get 9% damage increase. This goes really well with the 2H with the follow-up. What you're going to do as a stamp sword now is what people have been doing, but just is more effective. Heavy attack with the 2H. More than likely, your hurricane is going to already proc your Night Mother's Gaze. You're going to come in with the Dawnbreaker. That's 10% plus it's going to give you 9% because more than likely the heavy attack is going to bring them down into the 90% range. They're not going to heal back up to full. And if they do, even better for you. Um, this is very, very nice. Very, very nice. Um, a heavy attack into Dawnbreaker follows up by an Executioner or a heavy attack into D-Swing followed by Dawnbreaker then Executioner. It's many ways you can kind of switch up the combo here to kind of keep your enemies on their, on their toes about it. And also, too, something I wanted to go over here, I had a couple of you ask me, um, how to get more consistent D-Swing hits. Um, these are my camera settings. I'm gonna move these out of the way. I think the main one here that's that makes the most difference is the horizontal position. In this game here, the base starts you off where the camera is more so to your character's left. That really doesn't work out. How I managed to land a D-swing, let's say this rock here was, was a character. I'm aiming at their feet and I'm tracking their feet as they go along. And I'm also too at this angle where I can aim at the character's feet while moving around. I'm gonna keep it locked on their feet it seems like with D-Swing, the hitbox starts at the feet. If you can keep track of someone's feet, even going around a corner, you will nine times out of 10 always land at D-Swing. Also too, aiming at the feet gives you a little bit more range. It seems like I have a, a lot of, I get a lot of messages asking about how'd you hit me from that far. I'm always aiming at your feet. I'm aiming down, I'm aiming at your feet and down. Also too, keeping up Hurricane is very good for closing the actual kill. Um, Hurricane, we, I'm not using any defile on the spill here, so a, an enemy's healing is very detrimental to me actually closing the kill here. Um, the Hurricane dot ticks hard when you have the Master Bow, Master Bow proc. So you want to keep your Hurricane up here as you're trying to close the kill. Also, too, it works very well for Night Blaze when trying to get away. But definitely that little tip there of having the reticle right over your character's head and aiming at their feet and you can get your D-Swing to land more consistently. And I think that's pretty much it. Gone over all the sets. No poisons on this one here, we're using the enchants. I don't really use poisons anymore on the spill. Those are really from last batch. Uh, oh, as far as the pieces here, Two medium monster set, heavy chest, heavy legs, get the most resistance out, and medium so heavy and medium setup. There's no light armor in here. Um, we don't really have the, we could get more stats here with going 5-1-1. I don't really have that much room here in the resistance. What I have on 5-1-1, also two, um, running seven legion here, you can't really make the setup work in 5-1-1. But in other setups that I have run 5-1-1, I feel much squishier. So um, we're basically at the bare minimum of resistance needed for PvP. And that's pretty much it. So uh, I hope you like the build. Uh, let me know what you think about it. If there's anything you would change about it, I'm always open to, to suggestions and kind of get the conversation going to kind of make everything better. Or if you had success with it, just uh, let me know what happened. All right, take it easy.